Hi everyone, it's Debbie. I'm back with another video. This time it's um, a pen and ink haul from the Orlando Pen Show. I'm uh, fortunate enough to live in the area, the Orlando area, and was able to go to the first annual Orlando Pen Show last week. Uh, I think that um, there were some naysayers that thought there wasn't enough interest in Orlando to have a successful pen show, but uh, for the time that I was there, it was very successful, and I'm looking forward to the second annual one next year. It was held at the Florida Hotel in Orlando, which is attached to the Florida Mall, so it was easy to find. and cost $10 a day to get in. It was held for three days, and uh, the first 100 attendees got a bottle of Robert Oster ink called um, Purple Tolerance, uh, and I will swatch this later. Uh, there were a lot of vintage pens there, uh, lots of new pens, accessories, things like that. It was a fairly small show, although I've never been to a pen show before, but I have seen videos of the DC and the San Francisco pen shows, and it was a very small show. Uh, two small conference rooms full of vendors. Pilot was there, Esterbrook was there, Visconti pens were there, um, and then just a lot of um, individual vendors were there. They did have door prizes and raffles. Um, unfortunately, neither myself or anyone in my group won anything. I was really hoping to win the NASA pen. Uh, they had a space suit pen that they were giving away, but unfortunately I didn't win. So, uh, and these were all the little free trinkets that I collected while I was there. So the first uh, purchase that I made was some um, Colorverse ink from one of the, um, vendors there and they had these little packs of inks that you could get three for twenty dollars um, so I picked out three colors that I thought that I might like um, the colors are Anita Matter and Dust Storm this is a mauve this is a, a very cement gray looking color and this is a really cool uh, green I'll swatch these um, at the end of the video then I went to um, another vendor called Ander, Anderillium Ink and, and purchased some of, some of their inks from them. They are actually a local company out of Tampa, um, a handcrafted ink company out of Tampa. They only make inks. Uh, they use no animal products in their ink or their packaging. So let me turn this this way so you can see what it is. Um, they try to minimize plastic in their products and their packaging, and they sometimes reuse uh, packaging material from their suppliers. So if you order from them online and you get a strange box back or some styrofoam or something like that, it may be something that came from one of their suppliers. Their inks are water-based and made only with chemicals that are safe for the environment. So um, they have a, uh, a real care for the environment and especially the oceans. They're Inks are nature themed names. I got the Avian set as well as this, this large set. So these are the inks that I bought. A set of eight was, um, oh gosh, I can't remember. I want to say it was about $30. Not too bad at all, but I could be wrong on that. And again, I will swatch these at the end of the video. And then I also got this Cuttlefish Brown ink. Then I went to um, Divine Pens Plus, which is also a local uh, company in Palm Bay, which is just down the road from me. It's a family-owned business uh, that consists of a, the husband, the wife, and the son. They make custom handmade pens as well as accessories, which include um, some handmade jewelry. And uh, I got this handmade ink stand or pen stand, depending on how you want to use it. From them they had a lot of different beachy themed ones and so you could put some sample ink in here and get a cork and keep it in there or if you wanted to you can use it as a pen stand and just put a pen in there like that it's all uh, resin um, made material and um, they were really pretty it was really hard to choose which one to get but I ultimately went with the starfish one so I'm looking forward to using that um, for my pens. And then um, the next one I got, let me see where I can find it, was from an artist named 
Abdiel Acosta. He is a South Florida artist who does amazing artwork using fountain pens. Um, my friend bought an octopus print from him and it was just gorgeous. But he also sells these pen rests that are designed and made by his wife. I'm pretty sure it was his wife that he said made them. And so um, they were all different kinds of fish and different couple different colors and you can just set your pen in there and um, you have a very nice decorative pen rest. So I bought one of these um, and they were a nice price point. Just uh, really cute and something nice to add to your pen collection. Let me see if I can put this over here without breaking it. Okay, um, then pens. So we went to the Pen Realm booth and um, super nice people there. Kirk is a well-known Nipmeister and uh, helped us out as well as um, a young lady who was showing us the pens while he was working on other pens. I got this Narwhal Original Plus. Well, let me put it in the in the middle of the frame. Um, it's inked up with Ferris Wheel Press Ink, a Queen Allium. It has uh, a vacuum filling mechanism, which is my first that I have ever experienced. My friend had to show me how to use it. And um, it has a stainless steel nib, which I got in um, medium. And it came with a fine nib, but Kirk was kind enough to swap it out for me and get me the the um, the medium nib. So that's that one. I'll um, swatch this out in a couple minutes. Then we went to the Pilot um, booth, and I talked to them a lot about the Pilot Custom 823 because I was thinking about getting another Pilot Custom 74 or maybe moving up to an 823. And I really wanted to know the benefits of the 823 over the 74. Um, I can't remember the gentleman's name who talked to me, but he did, he was very patient with me and talked to me for a while, uh, about the fact that it does have a larger nib, um, has a greater ink capacity and a smoother writing experience. These are all valuable to me because I do journal for quite some time in my daily writing book, sometimes one to two hours at a time. So I'm all about the writing experience and having, um, a smooth flowing pen, so um, I was interested in this. So I was talked into getting the Pilot Custom 823. This is the, um, the amber color. It only comes in two colors, amber and smoky, which is like a black finish. This is also another vacuum fill um, pen. It has a 14 gold nib, 14 karat gold nib, and it comes in, um, it came in medium. And I have inked it up with the Andorillium Cuttlefish Brown, this one right here. Okay, so let's do some ink swatching. So I've come up with my system for swatching ink. I've made myself an ink journal out of a traveler's notebook insert. This was also something that I got at the show. The um, Esterbrook booth was giving these away. They say that they're wine charms, but um, I'm putting it on my... Um, on my ink journal. So I started this and um, let's let's go ahead and swatch out the uh, the show ink. And um, a lot of things were purple at the at the show. Um, it seemed to be the theme of the show and I thought it was a nice color to have since uh, we had learned the day before that the ink, the Queen had, of England had passed away. And since purple is a royal color, it um, was kind of fitting that um, we had purple ink at the, at the show. So this is, this is a really pretty deep purple and I love purple inks. Yeah, this looks almost black on this paper. Oh, there you go. You can see that it's purple. And this is called Purple Tolerance or Tolerance. Not Tolerance, but Tolerance. So that's the ink that they gave away at the show. Then we have. Let me see, where's my ink? 
Let's put a piece of paper here. Let's go ahead and do these, that Andorillium ones. So I have the Cuttlefish Brown. These people were super nice and uh, kind of exciting to see that they were out of Tampa, which is local to me. Um, oh, I know what I'll do. I have that in the 823, so I don't even need to dip it in there. We can make a... So you can see how the... Um, the 823 writes as well. Very pretty brown. Probably a little darker than I'm going to keep in this pen. I'm looking for more of a, maybe um, an orangey brown to keep in here. But it's a beautiful pen. I already got ink all over my hand. Okay, so that's the Cuttlefish Brown. Very pretty color. There are uh, other series of inks that they had that I did not get, but I was attracted to them by the names were all um, sea creature names. But um, I wanted this these colors of inks over the other colors. So this is what I got. So this is the... Pompadour Cotinga Burgundy. This looks like it's got a nice shade of purpley red. Very pretty. Oh, I like that. Make sure I spell it right. Tinga Burgundy. Nice color. I like that. I think I'll be using that some in the future. Next color, Galanul Purple. Oh, this is pretty. This is a different shade of purple that I don't own. Very purple. Sorry about my writing. My hands are a little shaky today. That's a nice purple. I like that. They also had a um, ink tester station with um, mostly Robert Oster inks that you could sit and play with the inks, um, which I enjoyed doing for a little while. There weren't a lot of companies that were selling ink, and I went with a list of inks that I wanted to get and uh, just didn't get any of the ones that were on my list. Okay, this is Rosette Spoonbill, something that we see occasionally here in Florida. Very pretty pink, very bright pink. They have some really pretty colors. American Goldfinch Yellow. I do not own any yellow ink, so this would be nice to add to my collection. That is a very pretty yellow, very bright. 
very goldfinchy. Hard to see though. Yeah, very hard to see. You might use this just for drawing and not for writing. Green Kingfisher, or Kingfisher Green. I've been looking for a deep green color, so this might be what I've been looking for all along. And this was uh, this was mainly the color that drove me to buy this set. Yeah, that's a nice deep green. Kind of an olive tone to it. I like that. That may go into my... Um, Green Twisby Eco. Yeah, I like that. I'm glad I bought that. Three more to go. And then we'll do the color for sinks and then we'll be done. Indigo Bunting Blue. I know I say that after each one, but this is a really pretty color too. Bill Stork Gray. This looks like it's got a little bit of a blue tint to it, which I like. It's not showing up. Yeah, maybe when it dries, it'll show up a little bit bluer, but I still think it's a pretty color. I do like gray inks. They're not as harsh as black, so I like using them a lot to write. And the last one of this brand is the Common Loon Black. Always use a good black ink. I am getting used to this uh, nib, getting a little more used to it. Don't hate it as much as when I first bought it, so I guess it just takes some time to get used to it, which is good because it wasn't the cheapest thing that I've ever bought. wasn't that expensive, but still wasn't inexpensive either. Okay, so that's the Andorillium inks for you. Nice colors. And then the last one that I have to swatch is, are the uh, colorverse. Oh, that bled through. Let's skip a page. So these are the color verse inks. Let's see, how have I been doing this? Oh, I've been putting a title up at the top. We'll do that um, later. Let me just go ahead and swatch these out. So these come with a little pipette. Each one comes with a little pipette. And look how cute that is. It's a... Um, 
five milliliter jar. And this is the Dust Storm color. Ooh, I don't even know if that nib's gonna fit in there. We'll see. Yep. <laughs> oh, see, I like this color. That's really pretty. Get a little bit more ink. Yeah, I like that green. Greenish brown, whatever you want to call it. Then this is the uh, matter. This was not my favorite when I swatched it after the show, very concrete gray. But uh, maybe it'll grow on me. Very dark gray. Okay, there's that one and then one more to go I do like these little bottles it's a nice way to get um, a, you know a decent amount to try out um, they had some other colors I, I was thinking about trying but I did not go back and get them um, we went into that area first and I, this was one of my first purchases at the show and then uh, did not go back there to try any of the other colors. And this one is called Anita. This is a very pinky mauve. Not sure how much I'll use this one. This is called Anita. Okay, so those are all the inks. That is everything that I bought at the show. It was a really good time. Uh, my friends and I had a great time being there. We were there for, no, oh, that doesn't hold that that well. We were there for three hours. When we first walked in and saw how small it was, I thought, oh, this is only gonna take a half hour to walk through. But no, we spent three hours there. Um, my opinion is that everyone in the fountain pen community is just super friendly. Uh, everybody was so patient and answered all our questions. And even people who were attending the show would um, be very helpful and offer suggestions. And um, I actually offered a couple suggestions to a few people when I was looking at pens and they were asking me about what I was looking at. So that was kind of cool. Anyways, um, that's it for this haul. My next video is going to be back to an art haul. I have several things that I bought in the last month or so that I want to share with you all. Uh, thank you all for watching. I hope you'll subscribe. I hope you leave me any comments or questions that you have. And other than that, I hope you have a great day. Thanks.